Once upon a time, a person sought refuge in Gautam Buddha's ashram. After spending two days alone, he got the opportunity to meet Buddha. He said to Buddha, O oh Buddha, I have some questions in my mind. I have come to you for the answers to those questions. Guide me. Mahatma Buddha said, Tell me, what are your questions? What is the real cause of your suffering and worry? The person was taken aback. He thought about Buddha's words for a while and said, Buddha, this is a strange question. I am asking you questions, and you are asking me again. Buddha smiled and said, This is your suffering. You should know what its cause is. The person replied, Buddha, you are a great sage. You should know everything. Buddha smiled again and said, This is your first mistake. You think that someone else can free you from your suffering, but that never happens. Only you can find the solution to your problem. I am just like you, except that I have clarity and no confusion in my mind. The day the delusion in your mind disappears, you will find the solution to your problem without needing to go to any Buddha. He continued, Did you observe these flowers carefully? The person was surprised and said, Who hasn't seen flowers? Flowers are seen by everyone. Buddha said, These flowers bloom in the morning and wither away in the evening. If you only think about the withering of the flowers, will they bloom? Similarly, if you always think about suffering, you will never be happy. There are many things in your life that can help you live happily. I can show you the way, but you alone have to walk on that path to experience happiness in life. Hearing this, the person fell silent for a while, contemplating. After thinking for some time, he said, But Buddha, one thing is not clear to me. Can all the problems of my life be solved at once? Buddha replied, If someone comes to you and says that you will die the next day, then you won't remember any other problems. At that time, you will only think about the ultimate truth of life, which is death. You will realize what's the use of worrying about problems. You will also think about how much time of this life you wasted worrying about problems. We never think that this life is temporary and fleeting. Our desires become so strong that we consider our life immortal. Happiness and suffering are not permanent in life. The cause of this happiness and suffering is our actions and thoughts. The person was attentively listening to Buddha's words. He said, So should I always think that I am going to die? Will that solve my problems? Buddha replied, No, never think like that. Think that my existence in this world is uncertain, and as long as I am here, I will remain content. Consider that you still have many things in your life that can make you happy and content. Stay with them, calm your mind, and see if there is any delusion in your mind. The cause of all the pain in life is our desire. Control your mind. Make your mind as simple as that of a child, and you will attain eternal happiness in life. The man asked, How can I control my mind? Buddha replied, We need to understand the difference between pleasure and pain. We need to understand what brings happiness to me and what brings sorrow. When we are not excessively happy in pleasure and not excessively unhappy in pain, it is called the middle path. We should strive to remain firm in the middle state. In this way, it will be easier to control the mind. We need to analyze what our sorrows are and what their causes are. When you draw a conclusion from this, you will realize that we ourselves are the cause of our sorrows. The mind always takes care of itself. Therefore, if you gain control over your mind, the pain will come to an end. Buddha then said to the same person, If you can do one more thing, you will see that sorrow will leave your life forever. The man asked eagerly, Tell me, what should I do? Buddha said, For the next two days do not talk to anyone. Go to a secluded place in the ashram and write about your sorrows and their causes. Then write about your happiness and its causes. Make a list. The man respectfully greeted Buddha and went to a secluded corner of the ashram. Two days later he returned to Buddha. Buddha said, First, tell me about your sorrows. The man began reading, All the brothers and relatives in my family are rich, but I am poor. They have undertaken new businesses and worked hard to increase their income. I spent most of my life just enjoying myself and being lazy. Other than a secure job, I didn't think about anything else. As a result, I never made as much progress as them. I always compared and envied my relatives. This became the cause of my sorrow. My neighbors saved a lot of money, but I couldn't save. This happened because I spent more than I earned and sometimes I was under a lot of stress. I got involved in bad company. I fought with my wife, parents, and children the most at home. 
I got very angry, and I took out my anger on my family. Sometimes I even thought about remarrying if my wife died. All of this happened due to my negative thinking, which gradually became my nature. I daydreamed about happiness all day long and had imaginary dreams. Then I worried and grieved because those dreams didn't come true. To forget my sorrows, I started drinking alcohol every day and held others responsible. These are my sorrows, and in all the sorrows, the root cause is my actions and thoughts. This time, Gautam Buddha smiled and said, Okay, now tell me about your happiness. This time, the person said with great enthusiasm, By living in seclusion and contemplating life, I realized for the first time in my life that the list of reasons for my happiness is so long that it will take a considerable time to read. Buddha smiled and said, This applies not only to you, but also to most people. Think about the reasons for sorrow. We waste precious time of our lives. In reality, our life is a storehouse of happiness, peace, and joy. Good. You can't read your entire list, so just read some. That man. He started reading with great joy. He said, I am alive. I am healthy and strong. I have my parents, wife, and children, like those fortunate people in the world. I have the greatest wealth, like the love of my parents, like the love of my beautiful wife, like the innocence of my children, and my happiness of being a father. When I come home, the affection of my children gives me strength in my life. I forget all tasks for a moment. I can work. I am healthy. I can do any work. I can increase my income. With your grace, I can create a happy family. Now I will leave my bad habits, as you advised. I will walk on the middle path. I can try to live with happiness and peace. As long as I am temporarily on this earth, I will learn the truth of life. I will know myself with a stable mind, and I will spend my life for humanity. Hearing this, Buddha said, Go back to your family. Today is your true birth. Stabilize your mind. Eliminate delusions. If even a little doubt arises in your mind about life, tell yourself, life is very short, and I did not come here to become a servant of sorrow. Analyze. Seek the cause of sorrow and destroy it immediately. Only then will you attain eternal joy. Buddha shares his thoughts and talks about working on actions. We have listened to the story. Now it's time for action. I have written my three sorrows and their causes on a page this week. One of the causes of sorrow is overthinking. Yes, thinking too much. Now I have engaged in destroying the cause of my sorrow.